how do you properly initialize a string? Should it be a null, string.empty, empty quotes, or default? There's quite a bit of confusion on this topic, so let's look at the different options. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology. But sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created the 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. So here I have a console application with four different initializations for a test value. So I've marked all these as nullable so that they won't yell at us for being null. They are still yelling at us because we have not used the variable yet, but don't worry about that. So we have test one, test two, test three, and test four. Test one has been initialized as null. Test two as string.empty, test three as an empty set of quotes, and test four as default. What are the differences and which one should we use? Let's start with kind of separating these into two categories. I'm gonna move test four up underneath test one and separate these two out. The reason why is because this is really the equal comparison. So test one and test four are basically the same exact thing. The default value for a string is null. So therefore saying default is the same thing as saying null. The only difference is that, you know, this might be more easily readable to say, oh, the default value, or this might be more clear because of the fact that you are saying exactly what it's going to be. It's up to you in which way you find more readable and understandable. But they're the same thing. It's a null value, meaning there's nothing there. Now, these other two actually have a value. Test two has string.empty, which is a value. It's actually a read-only field. Um, this, this, va this value is, it's a read-only field. And it, this one right here has just two quotes, which is a string constant. So which do we use, test one through test four, which one do we use for initializing our variable? Well, if you want to say that there's an absence of a value, then this is it. And of course I spelled absence wrong, but notice the, the blue squigglies. Now that we have here, we can actually say, you know what? That I meant absence. There we go. Um, fix my horrible spelling there. Absence of a value. Whereas this one is uh, a, a starter value. Okay, these are two different things. This means there is no value in this object. This means there is a value, but it's a starter value. So which do you choose? It depends on your situation. There are times when you want to say, hey, this represents, we have not yet figured out what the value is. Maybe um, you want to have this be the person's last name. Well, a last name should probably be null until you actually have a value because that way you can say, hey, you know what? I don't know, there's, there's no value here. However, sometimes with forms, that doesn't go over so well. You need to have some type of starter value. And so you start off with one of these starter values to say, actually, you know, it's blank because we're gonna say that a, a last name has to have at least one character. Therefore, if it doesn't have even one character, then it's just the starter value. Um, we haven't got an actual value for it. So it's up to you in your situation, which you decide is right. Now, we can ignore these two because they're the same. Okay, so let's talk about which of these two do you do? And you may have heard tutorials tell you that one is better than the other. You may have heard people say, hey, you know what? String.empty, that's the way to start your strings. It's more efficient than this. And the answer actually is, no, it's not. It used to be way back in the early .NET framework days, and even early to .NET framework days, so uh, I believe it was in .NET Framework 2.0, uh, not .NET Core, it's .NET Framework 2.0 um, when they changed this so that these two are close to functionally equivalent. They're not the same, but for all practical purposes, for what you need, they're the same. So it's up to you to choose which one you like better. And the question may come up and say, well, Tim, yes, but what if you have a string 
test five equals empty string again, or, you know, empty quotes again, doesn't that duplicate and create two different references? Therefore, you're doubling the amount of, um, of stuff in memory. Well, first of all, that would be a super tiny micro optimization. Don't do those. Um, avoid micro optimizations because that's not going to cause um, an effect in your application. However, in this case, it's also not true. This empty string right here is a constant. And as such, it uses the same constant for both of these. Therefore, it doesn't matter if we have 10,000 that are all start off with two empty double quotes, they'll use the same constant. Therefore, it's as efficient as having just one. Therefore, there is no efficiency to be gained here by using string.empty anyway. Now, there is a slight difference, like I said, between the string.empty and the empty double quotes. And the difference is string.empty is actually a read-only field, which is different than a constant. And this will pop up in a few kind of some of them edge cases feeling like, and some of them are, are more prevalent. For example, if you had a switch statement, you can't switch and have a case for string.empty. That won't work. But you can have a case for empty string or two double quotes. So there are times when it's actually much more valuable to have a two double quotes. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same thing. So when you're choosing between the two of these, it really comes down to preference. Which do you prefer, string.empty or the double two double quotes? Personally, I use, use two double quotes because it's just super simple. I mean, just two double quotes and you're done. And it's more in line with what we'd put in there for a value. I mean, it's no different than saying, well, you know, that to start. But for us, we start with nothing in there. So it's, it's the same, you know, as far as how it looks. So if I were to have, you know, string test five equals uh, A as my initial value, well, these two look very, very similar for initial values. It's just I've chosen this as my initial value or starter value for this one versus this for this one. So it's, you know, it's similar in look even when I have to start it with a, you know, some type of value in there, as opposed to this one, which is totally different for that empty component versus a starter value with, with some initial string in it. So the choice is up to you, but just know that these two are practically the same. There is no performance benefit of one over the other. Therefore, it's up to personal preference and what you find works best for your particular application. So that's how you initialize strings and that's the choices you have for those initializations. Let me know down in the comments if you have any thoughts or any questions. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.